So welcome to everyone for this 10th Anzac Eve Vigil. For remembrance of the, all those who have suffered in wars and conflicts and all the impacts of wars, including those on our Mother Earth. We come together on this evening each year to lament this suffering and loss and commit ourselves to creating a more peaceful future. Mount Ainsley is on Ngunnawal land, and I'd now like to introduce you to Auntie Jeanette Phillips, or Nin, as we know her, a Ngunnawal elder, to welcome us to country. Nin has welcomed us to this event for many years and is very much part of the um, Anzac Peace Vigil family. Over to you, Nin. Hello, everyone. Yimilandi Dura. Nungana Dura Nungwal Dura Yumelandi. I have four generations of men in my family that have worn the uniform to protect this country. And I also have a fifth generation, which is the front two wars. The war that took place here up above Lake Bathurst is euphemistically called an incursion where the old ones stood their ground and said, you won't pass. I am a descendant of the survivors, two women. I sometimes get terribly sad because my memory particularly is of my father and his brother when they came back from the Second World War. They weren't welcomed back in the normal manner. And for many years, um, the Arasil Club, I think there was only one or two that allowed Aboriginal returned soldiers Someone may argue with me that there was more, but there wasn't, because I know what my daddy went through. I remember when he passed, I asked for the flag to be put on his coffin, along with the Aboriginal flag. And they said, oh, well, we're not too sure. But nevertheless, we're here to celebrate in a sorrowful manner, all those that have gone before us, which gives us the life that we have now. I come here, I've got all gum trees around me, but you can't see them. It just reminds me of being up there on top of the hill. It's a, just a wonderful space to be in. And all those amazing people who put this together. Peace in my lifetime. I wish, but as we all know, the world now is with a silent war, but nevertheless a war with amazing heroes that are working to save all our lives, and people working to protect us. I think we must give them some sort of formal recognition at this moment. To all of you who have families and for all of you like me who wish that people could come to a peace. There are little children 
young adults that have never known the sound of peace or silence between the guns and the cannons. Maybe one day we'll get it right, if there's enough of us. But as somebody once said, it's not the quantity, but rather the quality of the people. And I think all of those of us that wish for peace, we are people of quality. Take care, look after yourself, and great spirit willing, I'll see you next year at the top of Mount Ainsley. Thank you. Yuma Landi. Thank you very much, Nin. And take good care of yourself in this time. <laughs> I'm hunkered down in the best bed there is. That's good. <laughs> no, Glad to hear it. I should have introduced myself. My name is Janet Salisbury. I'm a member of A Chorus of Women. And we are tonight uh, hosting this virtual vigil. Um, a Chorus of Women began when 150 Canberra women went to Parliament House 17 years ago and sang a lament for the people of Iraq as the Australian government went to war against them. Our lament was a song of empathy for all of the innocent people whose lives would, would explode when the bombs began to fall. Glenda Clockley, who initiated that song, says laments are always love songs. Love is as strong as death, it says in the Song of Songs. Glenda will tell you about another lament, this one for the first Anzac Eve peace vigil 10 years ago. Hello everyone. I'd like to tell you a little story about the first vigil. As we organized it, I found myself thinking about the strength of mother's love as a force for peace. I recalled the sad faces of Ellen Melvin and Marjorie Clockley, my two New Zealand great-grandmothers who lost 21-year-old sons in the First World War. I also read about the compassionate inspiration for the Australian War Memorial. By the end of the First World War, the bodies of more than 60,000 young Australians lay in foreign battlefields, forever separated from home and friends and family. At Gallipoli in 1915, the official war correspondent Charles Bean witnessed the killing of 7,500 of them. And he wrote that a sacred place would be needed in Australia where people could find the spirits of their beloved dead. So at dusk, on a windy evening 10 years ago, I walked up the bush path of Mount Ainsley above the War Memorial. The ancient, roundy mountain has felt like a home place of mine since 1980 when I came to live in Canberra. First Nations people say it is a women's place. As night fell, I sat in the bush imagining spirit mothers crying in the wind. I imagined Marjorie Clockley calling to her son, Lionel. I imagined Ellen Melvin calling her John. A tune came with some words. In the preparations for the first vigil, I often visited the songwriter Judith Kelly at the Aboriginal Tent Embassy. Judith is a Noongar woman of the Stolen Generation. You'll meet her soon. We found the voice of another spirit mother in a lament she'd written for her people, and we wove it into the song. The spirit songs for Anzac Eve follow the natural cycle of life, where the love and deep sorrow mysteriously leads to new life. The song has been part of the ceremony at the top of the mountain in all 10 peace vigils. We would like to show you the video we made as a meditation for our special vigil this year. Thank you.
now like to introduce my dear friend Annie Didcott, who is a founding member of the Chorus of Women. She was with us when we sang the Lament in Parliament House. She has a big story to tell about the effects of war on families. Her story is very relevant to us being gathered here tonight. Thank you, Johanna. World War II started three months before I was born in 1939. I found myself with my British father and German mother in central London. London. <laughs> Very young children take what comes without question. So I did not question the horrors being dealt out, such as air raid warning and all clear sirens both ear splitting. Ambulances constantly passing by, also with sirens. Sharp whistling as bombs were dropping, and then the explosion. Unavoidable panic and fear of being hit. Seeing the next day great holes in the ground with dirt, dust, stench all around, and often half of a house 
leaning perilously with furniture hanging down. If I didn't question the horror, I certainly felt it, and still do. To this day, the sound of a siren floods me with adrenaline. I recall the day when my mother desperately needed to buy bread and vegetables. So taking me and my brother in the stroller, made for the shop. As we passed underneath Putney Bridge, she heard a whistling close by and started to run. I picked up her fear. A man flung open his door, grabbed all of us plus the stroller and dragged us into the safety of his house. Luckily, the bomb missed us, but it was a very near miss. <laughs> While thinking about my story, this little poem wrote itself. This isn't normal. It's not the same. What's going on? How did it all happen? Shh, my child. Nothing stays normal. Just embrace the unknown. It rests within you to sail through the storm. One terrible aspect of the war was the frequent absence of one or both parents. My mother and we children had extended periods of hospitalization. My father joined the Navy when Hitler declared war on Russia, leaving mother with two very young children. Her thick German accent made her an instant enemy to her neighbors. She was reduced to riding the Underground Railway for some contact with other people. This has me in tears to this day. The consequences of all this wartime trauma has remained with me all the 80 years of my life and at times still raises its ugly head. Arriving in Australia, in 1981, I was enchanted by the beauty of this country and the friendliness of its people. <laughs> I was shattered when John Howard declared war against Iraq in 2003. All my previous passion surged up again, and I discovered that many other Australians shared my desire for peace on earth, with some even singing about it. I jumped at the chance of joining what instantly became known as a chorus of women. Lament, our first song which we sang in the foyer of Parliament House, expressed what brought us all together. The abhorrence of waging war and the terrible suffering that this would cause millions of innocent people. I had to do something. It must have been a miracle that Graham Dunstan appeared on the scene early in 2011 with his stunning Lanterns for Peace. And I latched onto him immediately. We put together a small team of enthusiasts including a number of chorus women, making lanterns, designing and printing flyers, writing and rehearsing music. In no time, the Anzac Eve Peace Vigil was born and it has become a Canberra institution. The vigil is most remarkable for the space it creates for grieving and the truly peaceful, warm and friendly atmosphere it generates. I believe it reveals our true human nature, which always longs for peace and harmony. Thank you. Thank you, Annie, that's really beautiful. Thank you. 
Well, at every Anzac Vigil, we also have community singing. We often have the community singing, oh, we even have um, an Anzac Eve songbook. And I'm really sorry, I was going to have a copy here to show you, but I've left it over there on the bookcase, so I won't. Um, but we usually start with the community singing and while well, we're gathering at the top of the mountain, but tonight we've turned things around a little bit. And in a moment, I'm going to hand over to Johanna and Meg to lead us in a couple of songs. Now, unfortunately, on Zoom, if everyone turns on together and tries to sing, it turns into a bit of a disaster because of the time lags, little lags between the videos. So we can't do that. Uh, so what we're suggesting is that you keep yourself on mute. Well, I've got you all on mute, actually. And you just, uh, Johanna and Meg will lead us. And in the comfort of your own home, you can sing along with these beautiful songs. Hello everybody, I'm Meg and this is Johanna. We start our community singing with a beautiful meditative chant from Taizai. Although we won't hear you, we'd love you to sing along if you know it. Or use it as a time of reflection. We'll sing it three times, introducing some harmonies as we go. As night we kindle the fire that never dies away, that never dies away. Within our darkest night we kindle the fire that never dies away. That never dies away Within our darkest night We kindle the fire That never dies away That never dies away Within our darkest night we kindle the fire that never dies away, that never dies away. Within our darkest night, we kindle the fire that never dies away, that never Within our darkest night, we kindle the fire that never dies away, that never dies away. Within our darkest night. Now, we would like to take you up to Mount Ainsley by video. Please join us in community singing in the first verse of the old peace favorite, Blowing in the Wind. Oh, <laughs> 
Thank you, Johanna and Meg. Uh, this year, the public rhetoric would have us believe that we are in a war, a war around, a war with COVID-19. The language of disease always tends to draw on war metaphors, fighting an illness, battling cancer, and so on but it seems to have gone into overdrive at the moment as media and our political leaders all refer to us being at war and how can we fight together to win the war and so on. This is not to be critical, it just shows how normalized war is in our public psyche as the go-to method to resolve a crisis. But in fact, if we think about it, the opposite is true. The response to the pandemic as was also the case for the bushfires last summer, is not a battle, but an upsurge of community caring and love. And it is these things that create sustainable solutions and a safer world. Peace is indeed the nurture of human life. I'm now going to invite my, our friend Judith Kelly to read her poem, Let There Be Peace which we all love and which expresses these feelings perfectly and also has a small shout out to our burnt forests and wildlife. Judith is a stolen generation Noongar woman and a wonderful poet and songwriter from WA who has lived in Canberra for many years. You've heard her already singing with Glenda in the Spirit Song. She is currently spending some time back in Western Australia so it's really great that she's here from Bunbury tonight. Hello everyone. <laughs> um, this poem that I've written is called Let There Be Peace. Let there be peace in all the lands where culture and harmony have been lost. Let there be peace on the streets where all who walk on that sacred soil feel safe and secure. Let there be peace so all can sleep without fear of bombings and missiles. Let there be peace without fears of knives, shootings and fights. Let there be peace when all are sick of fighting wars of misled trust. Let there be peace where all children grow up in caring communities. Let there be peace where hatred and anger are diffused, where tolerance and communication open up to equality for all. Let there be peace in people's hearts to lift up their brothers and sisters. Let there be peace for the forests around the planet where so many of our animal relatives live and now die. Let there be peace without greed and consumerism where everyone on this planet has enough. Let there be peace instead of blood on our hands. Let there be peace and time to listen and reflect to make peaceful decisions in our lives. Let there be peace without envy, jealousy and falseness. Let there be peace without religion to bring about pure spirituality. Let there be peace and treaty to heal our wounded souls and minds. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. I think we should have a moment of quiet reflection to think about that beautiful poem. I'm sitting here looking at the beautiful sunset out Johanna's western window 
It's just gorgeous. Makes me think I was up on Mount Ainsley. Our last community song is another old piece favourite. Last night I had the strangest dream. It was written by Ed McCurdy in 1950 and made famous by Pete Seeger. It was commonly thought to have been written specifically about the day in 1928 in Paris when the kellogg briand Pact was signed amid great ceremony by a room full of men. It was officially the General Treaty for Renunciation of War as an Instrument of National Policy. This forgotten treaty is still actually in force internationally today. And it's a dream we still have and it's not going away. Please sing it with us. Last night I had the strangest dream I've ever had before. I dreamed the world would all agree to put an end to war. I dreamed there was a Room, and the room was filled with men, and the paper they were signing said they'd never fight again. And when the paper was all signed, and the near and copies made, they all joined hands and danced around, and grateful prayers were made. And the people in the streets below were dancing round and round with swords and guns and uniforms all scattered on the ground. Last night I Strangers dream I'd ever had before. I dreamed the world that all agreed to put an end to Thank you. And of course, we would hope today that if there was such a room, uh, that it would not be just filled with men and it would have at least half of the people in the room would be women. And I know that we do have online tonight quite a few of our friends from the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom who work so hard uh, to ensure women's representation in peace negotiations. And uh, that organisation has been a huge um, inspiration for a chorus of women over the years. So I'm just thinking that now it might be time to just put ourselves back onto gallery view for a minute. Uh, so as to sort of go back, get back into the community, see each other again. At about this time, if we were up on the top of Mount Ainsley, um, it would be getting quite dark as it is outside here now. I have my side window open here and it is now quite fully dark outside and so the lanterns become much brighter and um, <laughs> and uh, yeah we're in around the fire and in community up on the top of the mountain so yeah so I have a well I just have a just go scroll, we'll just scroll through your screens at the moment and we'll have a little wave <laughs> okay. I was scrolling through a little bit just now um, while we were singing, 
and I could see people singing at home, which was lovely. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. For anyone who's um, not got their video on, on at the moment, wants to pop it on for a minute to say hello, that would be nice too. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Lovely to see you all. This is amazing, actually, that we've had so many people respond to this uh, virtual event tonight. It's just absolutely lovely having everyone here together. I had another small um, ulterior motive for scrolling through, although it is something that we were always intending to do, is because I'm actually looking for Graham Dunstan. <laughs> Graham Dunstan is the um, lantern master and great designer of artful events who has really designed this event in terms of the lanterns are his design, the, the um, um, Janet banners that we have. Yes, Sarah, can you I've see? got Graham on my phone. Right. <laughs> and so you continue to introduce him and he can speak to the audience, the yes. people. Oh, excellent. Via my phone, okay? Okay. Just, just wait a moment, Graham. Mm -hmm. So you continue, Janet. So Graham is our, yes, Graham is our lantern master and wonderful artful designer of events who makes this event really beautiful and has worked really hard to keep the event running over the years. And Graham, at this point in the evening when it's fully dark and we're on the top of the mountain, he introduces us to his vision for the walk down the mountain with the lanterns. And that is what he is going to do in just a minute. So after Graham has spoken, um, we will play a video of the walk down the mountain with some of the beautiful music from Spirit Songs. This will be a time for all of you for personal reflection and we will see you again next year. Can we have Graham? Um, time for me to speak? Yes. Go for it, Graham. So this is when we call the people together and prepare for this journey into darkness, into the darkness of grief. This is the metaphor we've been exploring. This is the nature of war. It's a grieving process and you know the survivors are the ones that suffer the most. The war touches everyone and reaches across generations. And this is what we want to bring to mind, to bring to consciousness, as we take our walk, carrying our light into the darkness and down the bush track on Mount Ainsley to the Australian War Memorial. Holding the grief and finding a way in it for each person, their own grief, building on a personal experience and then reflecting on that and reaching out to a neighbour's grief, you know. And wider still, to a country's grief, to a generation's grief that has been brought on by war. A poem from Rilke captured, for, captured it to me today, the kind of feeling. It says, Rilke, be ahead of all partings, like a winter that has just gone by. For there will come a winter, so endlessly winter, that only by wintering it through will your help hard to divide. So that's the quality. Led into this by the beautiful singing of the, the chorus of women and Glenda's spirit song. Holding this in our heart and holding a light, we venture into the dark and down the, the mountain. It's a beautiful walk, walk and hard to evoke in words. Because we're in a kind of a wonderland, over, looking over the city lights, a mass of constellations of light. And hidden by the trees, the dark trees silhouetted against this light, and our own light. Slowly, slowly, we do this in silence, reflecting inwardly, individually, the lonely joy, journey of grief. And at the end of the mountain, we link up again. We come back into song and community. 
singing those good old peace songs. But here is a resolution. And here is what we, what we find when we journey into grief. We always come back to community because grief is shared. Grief is always shared. Thank you, ladies. Oh!